So this week's topic of Amuna Mondays was fostering change while embracing growth. And before we begin, the class is dedicated to two names, so please just have them in mind. The names are as follows. Lule Nishmat for Yosef, Ben Devora, and Gabriel Maseo de Batsara. And that's for Lule Nishmat. So may their soul have the ultimate, ultimate aliyah. So the topic of fostering change while embracing growth. The reason I chose this topic was because many people are proactive and looking forward to growth but many at the same time many people are not the biggest fan of change i mean you can see that in the elderly you can see that in um the older generations just adapting to you know society now it's like they're they're not big on it they're really not it's like some things are just completely ridiculous to them and out of pocket in our generation it seems out of pocket and this and that but again like that's they were raised a different way and even in the youth it's just like change like when you get used to something let's say every day it's a certain thing and then all of a sudden something's going to switch up it's they're, they're not pro it they're just like what no this is not or if a person switches up or changes you know they were let's say on a path to do one career and then all of a sudden they changed or they were treated people like this and then they changed like that or their past was people are not pro change they're really not like it just it requires a lot of people to reanalyze and reassess the situation, and people don't like to do that. People like things to be just a, a smooth sailing, and change isn't always smooth. It's very sudden. It's very in the, in one person's eyes, it's very sudden. While the other one, it's like, no, I've been working on myself, you know. So change is something that n- typically has a negative derogatory to it. But growth is proactive. Everybody's like, everybody loves growth. Growth is like. Oh, good job. You're working on yourself. You're improving. Growth. And it's this whole topic is just simply there to, like, it's here to just express the fact that change does not exist without growth, and growth does not exist without change. They literally are a combo package, but for some reason, we're taught to separate the two. Change is one thing. Growth is another. Growth, people love. Change, people don't love. And when you think about that, it's it's exactly why people are the way they are in this world. We're very big on separating, you know. Uh, Ashkenaz Sephardic, this, that. At the end of the day, it's the same Torah. Same Torah. They're both correct. Nothing wrong with it. So, it doesn't really make sense to not be proactive in the situation and it's just a matter of perspective which way you choose to see it you can choose to see it as change which then you'll most likely be not proactively um accepting of it and fight it along the way or you can look at it as growth i needed to be in the situation this person needed to go through this situation to result in where they are now where they are now is definitely different than where they were before And that's with a relationship to God, even. If you look at God as, wow, he just changed up. God just switched up on me. You know, like I I was praying and then all of a sudden I get a ticket. That's not right. Why? Because you're referring to God as good. But at the same time, so when something in your mind doesn't classify as good, God switched up. But at the same time, if you have the same mindset, if you have the same mindset, but instead you look at it as growth. All right. You know? Right now, it doesn't feel ideal. But God does everything for the for the best. And there must be an explanation. There must be a reason. And whether that reason is completely delusional, that's fine. It's fine. Because you're, you have this mindset and this perspective to God is only doing good, so this has to be good. I might not have the answer now, but I'm going to continue life, and the answer might come to me. And that's extremely, extremely, extremely important. The only thing being separating it is the fact that you're looking at change and growth as a combo. They're literally together. You cannot get one without the other. You cannot grow without change. And you can't get change without the opportunity of growth there. But it's all a matter of you. You choose that. You choose whether you want to take growth or you want to just label it change and that's it. Like if a friend suddenly does something to you, Whoa, bro, you changed up on me. People don't like that. 
they're going to probably distance themselves. But at the same time, if somebody is operating off of growth, and that's the mindset of growth, they're going to be accepting of you. I have plenty of friends that are not religious, that I completely disagree with. But at the same time, I understand, you know, this is the person. I love them. I care for them. So what they do is on them. But I accept them fully. Whether it's they're doing something I, I completely agree with or I don't or they don't. Why? Because I understand that change has a growth, an opportunity for growth. And when somebody's operating off of that kind of love and that kind of care for somebody, that it's a combo. I love you on your good days and your bad days. Not just your good days. Not just when you do things for it for for me it's like wow this person actually cares for me but how many people do you know in your life that if suddenly things turn south they're still there you know or you don't have to hide yourself be like oh i accidentally did this or i purposely did this but i can't tell somebody because i don't want them to look at me a different way if the person was accepting you for everything the good the bad and the ugly they're there they might not be agreeing with it. They might be like, yo, bro, like uh, that probably wasn't the best move. I, I don't really, I don't agree with what you did. That's fine. They don't have to agree. Just because, just because they're your friend does not mean they have to agree with everything you do. But at the end of the day, they're not turning their back on you because of what you've done. You know? So it's, it's comes with the simple, simple, simple. It is very simple. I say simple because it, it's very simple. On separating the two, change and growth are two separate things. It's it's we have to know when to bundle things and when to not bundle things. You know, when you're having a really amazing day and you're feeling inspired and tore, that's great. That's great. Go ahead and and do what you got to do. Do what you want to do. You want to pray, pray. But let's say one day you're waking up and you don't feel like praying. There has to be a balance between heart and mind. We're trained in school. Knowledge, 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 knowledge. Everything's knowledge. So the minute something doesn't make sense when you're older, you've never attempted using your heart. Ever. So when you finally start attempting to use your heart, it typically goes to the things opposite of what you know. Many people grow up you know, religious, let's say, in the home, they're very religious growing up. But suddenly when they have a uh, independence, they toss it all away. Why is that? It's because it was strictly all knowledge. It doesn't matter what you were feeling. Do, 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 do. Do it, do it, do it, do it. doesn't matter what you feel. The minute they grow up, they're like, no, I, I, I want to start feeling. I want to start feeling. I'm sick of doing things that I don't feel. And it's drugs, partying, clubbing, drinking. They're just, those things are just to feel. These people don't feel anything. They want to feel something, and those are the things that they feel. Yeah, are they extreme things? Sure. Sure, they're extreme. But they're still there. They're still feeling. So it's like just work on the fact of knowing what to feel and when to feel it. We've been trained when we're younger, especially in the Jewish religion, to do, do, do. There's no, no this, it doesn't matter if it makes sense to you. You know, put on to fill in because you're supposed to. Keep Shabbat because you're supposed to. But as soon as you start, your brain starts adapting and you get older, you start realizing, why am I doing this? I don't know. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. Just because I know a lot of people that don't do, many people think it's because they don't know. The truth is, sit down and talk to the people that, that don't, don't do certain things. You'll be shocked as to how much they know. They're extremely knowledgeable on the thing, which is crazy. But by default, we label them as, oh, they don't know. They don't know better. That's not true. They really do. So, again, this topic was dedicated to Leulei Neshma, to Yosef Ben Devorah, and Gabriel Masaudi Batsar. May both their Neshamas have the ultimate Aliyah. See you next week.